My name is Peter Bruninger. My name is Kemper Holt from AV Showrooms. And I'm Terry Orenji from AV Showrooms. And we're here for Reviewer's View Rocky Mountain Audio Fest 2018. And this was a great fest this year. It's the last year in the Marriott Tech Center for RMAF. They're going to be moving to a new hotel in Aurora, Colorado next year. So it's all going to be, all the rooms are going to be different next year. So this was the, the swan song. And we had great sound yes. this year at the yes. show. I think it was the best sounding Rocky I've ever attended. I think so too. And I've been coming since 2004 and the first year they had it. So ladies first. Terry, pick us a room, please. I'm going to start with Audio Solutions. It's a new line of loudspeakers from Lithuania brought in by Ozan from High End by Oz. He's the dis distributor for these loudspeakers. There's a small version called the Figaro M, and in another room he had the Figaro XLs. They were unbelievably organic, huge sound stage, yeah. non-fatiguing. Yeah. The, the, the big difference between the small speakers, in my opinion, and the loud ones is that there was more reach in the lower frequencies in the large. And yeah, that, so. was, that was very apparent. But the price, guys. I mean, yeah. this, this is a, a, a speaker that can compete with Magico, and I, that's my word. I mean, I'm, yeah, we're talking I'm going out on a limb. $7,500 7, for the Figaro's. $7,500 for the small ones. Yep, and fifteen k for the big ones. Yeah. Kemper, you, you thought they were $30,000 plus speakers. Oz asked me, and I guess... I think I guess sixty or seventy, and, and it's a lot of speaker. Yeah, it's a lot. And of he speaker. said fifteen k. I said one hundred and fifty. No, I said fifteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fifteen. So okay. Well, since you have the floor, throw us out one, please. Uh, a, a stunning uh, new addition to me is a uh, a soul box. Al box. Al box. Mm -hmm. uh, a uh, planar magnetic uh, three way. A base panel, a mid-range panel, a tweeter panel, a little skinny tweet tweeter panel that were just stunningly exciting. Um, I mean, the, the, we didn't hear bass reproduction better anywhere. I mean, actually sounding like a drum, and it's a planar magnetic. There was no woofer. It's all set, completely planar. Uh, it's very efficient. 96 dBs. They're using uh, neodymium magnets in a push-pull on both sides uh, configuration. Uh, the depth of stage went way back and it never narrowed as it went back. It stayed all the way wide, all the way to the back of the stage. But the biggest difference was that it had stupendous dynamics. It, yep. it yep. made a big band sound like they were right in the room. We listened to this cut from uh, Harry Connick Jr. in other rooms. We kept thinking, is that the same cut or is something broken? Uh, they were... They're, they're just terrific loudspeakers. Yeah, and there's a couple of dealer distributors uh, sniffing around them. Hopefully, they'll get picked up here for for the United States. That hopefully that so. pair has to go back to Italy uh, on a, on its on a, on the visa or the customs. So we're hoping that we somebody picks them up because we want to hear them at more shows. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take the next one. Uh, we started the show off on the first day. I went into the global room. We have the uh, the big bending wave speakers there. These were just off the charts, tight and fantastic in the ability to throw an image in space that was, you know, it wasn't that it was had super edge definition, it had realism. There's something about that bending wave driver because it's covering the range from 200 hertz all the way up, and that's a big deal. So the, the lower frequency drivers are not anywhere near the presence region. So you're getting the, that coherency from the single bending wave driver. So a big shout out to uh, Goebel and a big shout out to Bending Wave USA. They were matched up as C precision and making absolutely fantastic sound. Um, Terry, how about another one? Uh, Zeloton. Uh, Gideon Schwartz from Audio Arts in New York City brought the Zeloton two-way monitors to the show. And they had that definite Zeloton signature, guys, that we like so much, Peter. Mm -hmm. It was, the music was pure, it was so quiet, realistic, without sacrificing any of the emotional impact. Mm -hmm. They were fabulous, probably one of the best monitors I've ever heard mm -hmm. at a show. Kemper, how about you? Why don't you throw another one out? I'm going to throw out uh, Joshua Miles' room, mm -hmm. uh, JWM. Uh, this time they had the Allison speakers, which are terrific, mm -hmm. uh, two ways. And this time they had all Aries Surratt electronics. Uh, last year they didn't have the amp. This year they had a 25-watt 20, amp. Sounded like 250 watts easy. Mm -hmm. uh, 
clearly the best rendition of uh, Ray Brown's solar energy at the show. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he gets the box speaker to produce horn-like dynamics. They are terrifically exciting. Uh, no bass blow, tight, tight, tight bass. Uh, the plucked bass was stupendously good. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought the room was outstanding too, and it's the fit and finish of the loudspeakers, the airy serrat of uh, uh, electronics, uh, just a match made in heaven. The yeah. genus, yeah, and yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And, the genus. Gen and the genus amplifier, 25 watt per channel amplifier. It's going to come our way, and we're going to put <laughs> it on the audio note system just to see and compare and contrast. Wow. Yeah, it's not going to be cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, Terry, another one. Synergistic research. Once yeah, again, Ted geez. Denny has one of the best sounding shows rooms at the show. And this just seems to go on and on, Peter. He, every, he raises the bar every single time. He had these new Galileo SX cables he was showing, and we played a, a beautiful piece from Carmen, mm -hmm. and it was just unbelievable. Yeah, the we, sounds of the bells, you've got to listen you, you to that video. You've got to listen to that video. I'm, the I'm sounds it of comes the, through on yeah, YouTube. You're really going to hear it. It's, it's amazing. It pierces through the sound. It's just, it, and it's, it, they're up in the, it's like you're there in church or something. It's just yeah, awesome. So congratulations to Ted and team once yep, again for yep. making great sound. Yep. And uh, I'll throw one out. I think the ESDs from China oh, wow. were surely a showstopper. These horns are carbon fiber. And they're based upon the design from uh, Bruce Edgar, from Edgar Horn. If you remember back, viewers, if you, he, he was a designer, uh, started in the business about 25 years ago, uh, really wrote a new book on horn design and the d dimensions of the throat of the speaker. And a young man who's uh, Chinese and his, and his father decided to come to market with these speakers. They claim that these are the only high-end speakers, super high-end speakers, designed and manufactured in China. So there's many speakers that are manufactured in China that use Chinese factories for the assembly, but these were designed there and voiced there. And here they were here, and they threw this huge soundstage because they're this, the horns are even wider than the spread of my arms right now. It's, well, wait, you, well, you'll see the image In here as you look at it. it was like a wall of electronics. Well, a wall of electronics, yeah. yeah. They slightly dominated the room. They slightly <laughs> dominated really the room. Really <laughs> yeah. Eye candy and Yes, candy. eye candy galore. How about another one, Kemper? Sure. Um, how about well-pleased audio vinyl? Uh, Mark Sosa put together another terrific room. He introduced his QLN Prestige 3 uh, floor standing loudspeaker, which are actually slimmer and prettier than the stand mounts. Uh, he also used um, the uh, NUO uh, oh, statement, yeah. server, the statement server, two yeah. box server, mm -hmm. sensational. Sensational. Beautiful uh, chassis, and they just designed that chassis, it's very sophisticated Very design. sophisticated, the power supply and the unit itself have opposing uh, the design cues on it so they fit together in the eye, it's, it's eye candy. It's aesthetically beautiful. It's just aesthetically beautiful. And it sounded beautiful. And it sounded really good. I, I was yeah. shocked. I think it's the best I've heard Mark Sosa's room sound and he always says it's He used sound. the uh, yeah. Aqua formula yeah. and then he introduced uh, new uh, Lindenberg mm -hmm. electronics including the Vidor uh, amplifier yeah. that's sitting in front. Terrific yeah. sound. It was terrific yeah. sound. Great just sound staging. Speakers disappeared. Uh, lots of inner detail, subtle little inner detail filtered right through. Mm -hmm. Terrific room. I'll throw another room out. I'm going to throw out the A Audio Imports with Wilson Banesh. The Wilson Banesh speaker just won a Golden Ear Award. It, this, these speakers disappeared in the room that Brian Ackerman from A-Audio Imports, he gets that same room year after year after year. We've heard Lanchies in that room, but this year it was, wow, it was right-sized for the room. And I'll, I'll tell you, the dynamic impact of that Wilson Banesh speaker, it has that, it's a subsonic or it's a, a, the, the round unit. I think of it as a subwoofer, but they say it actually goes lower in frequency, and it is, it adds to the foundation of the sound of that loudspeaker. And of course, Ypsilon Electronics, and that was just a match made in heaven. I would give that room one of the best of the shows. Shout out to Mr. Ackerman, best sound you ever got in that room. So if he can get that kind of sound in a hotel room, imagine what he can do in your room. Terry, how about another one? I say Sig Sigma Acoustics. Cave Safari with Audio Logic is bringing them in from Italy. These are loudspeakers. 
they were absolutely incredibly realistic and natural. Awesome. They were awesome. They have a ribbon on top. Yes. They're not a di diapolito. Many ribbon speakers, mm -hmm. diapolito. This was interesting because the ribbon's relatively large. And so you got the whole top end of the frequency response was just circulating in air throughout the room because he didn't have the top of the speaker mm -hmm. in a diapolito to interfere with it. So I had to give it high marks for that. And also the bass was real tight too. Oh, yeah. Wait do you guys hear the this, video. These are it's, very, very special. And, and the fit and finish and the beauty of them, I mean, it just reeks. Italia. Oh, and it's, the, oh, this design. It's, it's really something else. As you can see here. He also awesome. had Avic and Anzus cables yeah. and uh, electronics and DTC cabling. Yeah, they were using a uh, AVIC a U300 amplifier, mm -hmm. which is one of my reference amplifiers. Right. I think it's the best switching amplifier on the market today. Lots of emotion, which is unlike a lot Lots of Lots of emotion in that, in that switching it's amplifier. Surprising. Yeah. Another Kemper, room. another room. Um, I'll say uh, Tecton. They had three models at the show. The double impacts, the uh, Electron SEs and the big boys, the uh, Encores, and mm -hmm. Eric uh, is doing a great job with this tweeter array. Everyone knows about the tweeters, and when you use an array of uh, 15 tweeters, you can get the, the mass of the mid-range drivers down to the, the mass of a tweeter cone. It gets, it gets 300 hertz up out of a tweeter for a mid-range. Mm -hmm. First thing you notice is how much more information there is. Uh, Electrostatic-like in that regard, mm -hmm. and then you pick uh, the size of the product you need to fit your room and uh, how much basic extension you need. Mm -hmm. But they're really affordable and terrific sounding. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, another room. I'm going to throw out a room, and it's been I don't know how can I how can I say this? Uh, I've seen pictures of this loudspeaker for the past two years, and I've been wondering where is it? When is it going to come to market? Well, it came to market today. It's the Verity Monsova. And this speaker, it did what no Verity has ever done before. It simply astounded you with the stage presence of being at a concert. The woofers, four or five of them, stack up behind it. You'll see it here in this, uh, this shot here. Yes, there are woofers back there. And there's four 15s per side. And then you have the main tower. And the, it's... The speaker runs off of standard amplification. It does not have separate powered uh, modules in the woofer towers themselves. So it's, it, it has an electronic crossover designed by Verity, and the amplifiers are made in the design by Verity. This is a loudspeaker that's of reference quality that can hang with the biggest and most expensive loudspeakers in the world. It is, to me, I think one of the hits of the show today. So a big shout out to, uh, to Verity mm -hmm. and, uh, again, uh, Amplifier and speaker, mm -hmm. same that a, company. Yeah. That, was a, that was a huge sound stage. Huge, that room yeah. and huge. presence and oomph, oomph and Wasn't presence. It like a million and a half dollar system. I think it was. It was something like it was a million dollar system. One point four. One one point four. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Terry, have another room. Well, Barnes and loudspeakers. Uh, they were so beautiful. They were. The sound was so quiet and clean. Clean and clear, like and a clear, like, like a, a mountain clean. stream. Yes, that was sort of what yeah, I said yeah. in the room. Yeah. And there was just no noise, nothing. Accompanied with the AVIC amplifier, mm -hmm. it, which is the switching amplifier. This is the P150. Well, they didn't have that one on. They, they had the other one on. Mm -hmm. But they have a new amp stereo amplifier called the P150. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so they had the U150 on. They had the yeah, U150 yeah, on. Okay. And it was, there was so much emotion coming through something that was just so unforgiving as far as realism. Mm -hmm. that, that is the, that's, the, that's the tipping point there. That's where what everyone's trying to do is, is give you real, realism, natural, but also have that emotional attachment to the music. Mm -hmm. Important. And yeah, very important. I, I, that's what I was getting in the show, guys. Mm -hmm. That was happening in a lot of rooms for me mm -hmm. at this show. And that was particularly one of the best. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kemper, another room. If uh, your domestic environment requires speakers to be close or up against the wall, I know where don't you're going. give up. Do not give up faith. Uh, uh, Dr. Vinyl, Jose, as we know, uh, has uh, showing us the new Larson 9s, their debut, uh, 15K a pair, but they go right up against the wall, and the first thing you notice is that the, like a voice starts behind the wall. So you're going to yeah. get depth, 
that you, you know, most speakers you want to have three, four, five feet out from the wall, and the wife is going, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So here you have a speaker that goes right up against the wall, designed that way, um, and you get depth, tremendous width, uh, you get a, a sweet spot that's almost everywhere in the room, that's really right. nice, yep. and really solid, you wouldn't believe how solid the base is on this thing, and they, and they changed the exterior to a beautiful wood grain finish. Now. It's beautiful, as you can see here. What astounded me when I came in for our listening session was the amount of base. I couldn't believe it. It was such an organic feel of the base, and it was. I thought it was reaching down into the teens. And he said, "No, the three dB down point. It's like 26 to 28." So I did full B, and then the sound stage is wall to wall. Now I don't know why more people don't design speakers to go against the wall. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, we have an audio now does that. And Larson, they're the two that come to mind. Two out of thousands of speakers. And they both do a great job and they with both, that criteria. With that criteria to, to go up against the wall. So, wow, big shout out mm -hmm. to, uh, and they're imported uh, by Audio oh, Skies. Like yep, Audio Skies uh, the, does a great job bringing those speakers to market. Uh, we also had the Gamut Electronics on that, and we had a pair of Audio Blue turntable in that room. It was mm -hmm. stunning, just stunning. Mm -hmm. Okay, Terry, how about another one? We are currently in the Rido room, and our last listen was on the Scansonic MB5B, and I'm telling you, we, we listened to Roger Waters. Yeah. Uh, it's a miracle. And when the bass came in... I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe I it. I couldn't believe it because we had just played the same track. We were just getting ready to do this reviewer's view. Just right now. And we were just finishing off a listening session. Yeah. I, I just jotted it down. I said, it's, this thing is incredible. It's incredible. For $7,500. Yeah. And I could probably pick it up. It's awesome. So I, mean, I, know. It really I know. They're slender. They almost disappear in the room. You're not yeah, kidding. They're, they're, they really are doing everything. Are now, really that's a different sound than the Scansonic that I heard up until Benno came aboard that's right now. That's absolutely yeah, and that's, right. And this that's, is totally it's different. It's totally different. This, I mean, they look yeah. the same, but they don't sound the no. same. This sounds like the big Rido D 4.8. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a 4.8. Oh my goodness! And I think that there's there's more of an organic ability or organic sound that Benno gets out of the, the loudspeaker. The the titanium drivers on the Rido are it's they're not the same drivers in the Scansonic because the price points are very very different. But the sonic signature of the Gestalt, yeah. Yeah. it's right there. It's, there. it's like okay, I don't have 160 for the Ridos, uh, but I have. How much are these again? I have 7,500 for the Scansonics. So I think that that probably is one of the best bang for the bucks here at the show today. Yeah, the MB5B. MB5Bs. The they don't for, dominate the room. The no. B stands for Benno. B stands for Benno. Yeah. Okay, and another room. And I think we're coming to a, sh a close pretty soon. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, I have to say the MBL room with... Uh, the uh, UHA reel-to-reel uh, -reel deck. Yep. Uh, it was the best I'd heard MBLs because they integrated the woofer with the rest of the speaker seamlessly. It finally sounded like top to bottom one thing, mm -hmm. stunning dynamics, wonderful transparency. Uh, they, they did use extensive use of specifically designed room treatment for that particular room, mm -hmm. and it worked fabulously well. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're coming to a wrap here, and... Before we do that, we came off of a listening session and a video shoot about an hour and a half ago. And it was one, another one of those things where I lost a little bit of my mind. I left it, it's back there. There's just a little piece of it back there. And guess what the name of the room is? Nobody, oh, 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 you can't tell me back through YouTube. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's the Von Schweikert Vac Room and introducing the Ultra 9s from Von Schweikert. And they're beautiful. beautiful see, them red. Red. see them here in red. It's, it's totally Cardinal awesome. Cardinal red. Cardinal red. And Terry, tell us about the amplifier. It's an upright integrated amplifier that stands almost as tall. Yeah. It was the 450i IQ. Uh, we're showing you a picture probably right about You're now. You're right about now, yep. And <laughs> it, it, I said to Kevin Hayes, it was so quiet. I know. I mean, it was just... It, the room was, first of all, these speakers with, with that amplifier, this room is a concert. Yep. You want to go to a concert, you, you, and you're able to afford, the, afford this room or this, this, this setup, this is what you want. Yep. Now there's, there's no doubt about it. They give you the scale of the Ultra 11s, uh, but in a size, it's more right size for most viewers' rooms. 
uh, the Ultra 11s are 300,000, these are 200,000, they're half the size, so you go, okay, but so, they're yeah, but they're, they're still, deeper. They're, they're deeper, they're way deeper because you have to have that cabinet size to produce that kind of bass, but the and the bass was, holy smokes, and the concert, concert effect, it's a live concert sound, it's awesome. I spent uh, four hours there Saturday night, <laughs> and I can tell you, I've heard other other systems in the show with same records, and uh, nothing could touch that system. It's I, that was just amazingly good. Uh, yeah, it was teamed it was up. Breathtaking. With, breathtaking. Yes. Teamed up with the Kronos turntable, esoteric digital, uh, master built cables, master built cables, and the uh, uh, yeah, the Kronos with the SP uh, uh, super capacitor power supply mm -hmm. uh, is a uh, Opus One cartridge, and just an outstanding. The sense moment. of realism, the yeah. sense of being at a concert, yeah. the, the bass driving yeah. impact yeah. was yeah. superior to Super everything I heard. Yeah, it was awesome. Just and awesome. the uh, I think they voiced the mid range just a smidge forward in, in perspective, mm -hmm. and the voices were so intimate and right there in the room. Yeah, it was an incredible experience. You'll see it in the video. It's awesome. It's unbeatable. It's yeah, great room. Great room. Well, I think that leads us to take home. Who wants and what will you take home? Now, we're sitting in the Rider room right now, and so I'm going to leave this off. The sound of the 4.8s is just mind boggling. It takes that signature Rider sound and it gives it more life and it gives it more of an organic sound, and I think that's the Benno influence. There's a Benno in there. There's a Benno inside that cabinet. <laughs> Benno Melgrade. Uh, <laughs> he uh, worked and ran a gamut up until they were acquired by Dantex uh, at the beginning of, uh, when was that? It was the beginning of this year? And he's now fully able to integrate his design philosophies into the Rido line and into this speaker in particular, the D4.8. So we're talking about take home. Uh, before I say what I'm going to take home, let me tell you the sound stage on the 4.8s. It's so massive and the dynamic range and the reach of the low frequency drivers far surpasses the D4.1s that I have in my listening room. So what do I want to take home? I want to take these home. I want to take the D4.8s home and guess what? My wish came true. They're getting shipped to my house after the show. We'll be setting those up just before CapFest. I'll be reporting on Facebook, so follow my Facebook feed. Uh, again, we're, we do a lot of work on, our, on my Facebook feed. Uh, you can really stay abreast of what we're doing in our listening studios. And Terry, what would you like to take home? Well, there's no doubt. I want to take home the Audio Solutions Figaro XL. That's the uh, larger. Oh, okay, no kidding. Yes, uh, it just it fit every, it ticked every box. You know, we all want that Von Schweik at home. Well, yeah, yeah, we all want the Ultra Lavins or but the I, Big Facts. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, this was such a, a discovery. This is one of the reasons that these shows can be so much fun. Because all of a sudden you're discovering something that is just so obscure. Nobody's heard of it. Or new. This is new, new, this new is, to our country. I mean, new to our country from Lithuania. Mm -hmm. And I was bowled over. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, the Figaro XL's Audio Solutions from High End by Oz in Los Angeles. Okay, and Kemper. I've got to take home those planar magnetics from Isobox. Uh, uh, just, they just, we wanted to keep so going back in the room and just listen to music, but I had to press on and get back, go to listen to that room again. Just stunningly alive, stunningly real, mm -hmm. uh, really engaging. Just mm -hmm. made you want to sit down and be surprised by new music. Yeah, and what I liked about them too was I never heard any digital edge, I never no. heard any edge definition that we sometimes hear in, in hyper-analytical speakers. Right. This is just a wall of sound, like Phil, Phil Spector's wall of sound. <laughs> it was awesome, I, and uh, maybe I'm overusing that term, but this room was one of those rooms where you could just sit there mm -hmm. for days and days and days. It was awesome. Someone pick them up. Yeah. <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone bring them Someone in. bring them into the United States, please. But anyway, it was uh, uh, that room standout, above standouts, Von Schweikert, yeah. another one standout above standouts, the Monsavat standout above standout, the 4.8s here. You can go on and on and on. There's just so many good rooms this year. It's going to be very, very hard to pick the Gold Show Awards. I think there's going to be a lot of them this year. Discussion. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Wrapping up from Rocky Mountain Audio Fest 2018, we're going to say goodbye to the Marriott Tech Center. We're going to say hello to the new venue next year up in Aurora, Colorado. And until we see you next at the Capital Audio Fest, I want to wish everybody happy listening. From Peter Bruninger, Kemper Holt, Terry Orinji. We're all from AV Showrooms. Thank you much, guys. Bye. See, see you next show. Bye. Bye.